If you wish to contribute to this channel, it's easy. When making your purchases, use the affiliated links available in the description. Every gesture like this makes a big difference for us. What type of food we should eat so that our life reaches its full potential for a college or a school-going student? So what kind of food? We must understand this. Food is not a religion. Food is not a culture. Food is just the fuel for this machine. Yes? There may be cultural aspects to the tastes. There may be even religious tinge to the food over a period of time. But essentially, food is fuel for this body. So with what kind of food will it function with minimum struggle within itself and maximum impact? So suppose you buy a petrol car and pump diesel into it, it may still roll around but not at its optimum. Similarly, various foods you can eat and still somehow it functions. But those communities which have eaten with care, you can clearly see a distinct difference in the way they function, the levels of intelligence and whatever. So in India, we prescribed food for different people in different way. If you're doing menial jobs, you eat one way because you need physical muscle. If you're doing other kinds of trading and other kinds of activities, you eat another way. If you're a fighting class, you eat differently. And now if you're into education, spiritual process and subtler aspects of life, then you eat differently. If you are in education, one of the greatest challenges is to stay focused on something. The goddamn textbook. <laughs> the wonderful textbook that is written, is written for an average intelligence. It's a common prescription. It's not written for the brilliant student. It is written in a way that it's a common prescription, everybody gets it. But that textbook, how much effort it is taking for a whole lot of people? How they have to read it ten times to get it? But you lie down in your bed and read a love story, you remember every word, huh? <laughs> yes or no? How come? So you don't lack memory, you don't lack focus. It is just that textbook and you chemistry is not uh, working <laughs> So what you need is a higher level of focus, a higher level of involvement. And another great enemy for a student is because this textbook is such a tranquilizer, the moment you open it, Go to cinema till 2 a.m. you're up. Open the textbook at nine o'clock. Right there, you smash into it. <laughs> so sleep is another big enemy. So what kind of food do you eat so there is no inertia in the body? In yogic way of seeing things, we are looking at tamas, rajas and sattva. Tamas means inertia. Rajas means activity but no balance. Sattva means absolutely balanced kind of energy. When you're in education, you need a very balanced kind of energy because you have to focus on something which doesn't naturally interest you. It's not something that… with which your chemistry is gelling. If your chemistry is gelling, you are always focused on that one, isn't it? Here there's no chemistry but you have to focus on that. For this you need a balance and a steady mind. For this you need, need to eat in a certain way. To put it very simply, food goes through your body through the alimentary canal. From your mouth to your anal outlet there is a pipe. Through this it runs going through various stages of digestive process. Many of you are biology people, right? So, it goes through the elementary canal. Now it begins with the… the lip. 
Here, if you look at this, all the herbivores and carnivores, if you look at the animal kingdom, there are herbivores and carnivores are two main segments of animals in the world. One eats vegetable matter, another eats meat. If you look at the alimentary canal, the way it is built, between herbivores and carnivores, there's a distinct difference. Everything in the human being suggests that you are naturally a herbivore, but for the sake of survival, we became carnivores. If you look at the moment, jaw moment, all the carnivorous animals have only cutting action. Herbivores have cutting and grinding action. There are molars, but carnivores don't have widespread molars, they have just incisors, canines, and everything looks like cutting teeth. So they do only this. All the herbivores do grinding. What do you have? Both. So you are supposed to chew your food. Why you are supposed to chew your food is that you have enzymes in your saliva where if you take a little bit of raw rice and put it in your mouth just for a minute, you will see it turn sweet right here because right here sh uh, carbohydrate is being converted into sugar, right here. So if you eat properly, then we say about thirty to fifty percent of your digestion should happen in your mouth. So this part of the digestive system is expecting half digested food or partially digested food. But right now the way we're eating is mostly we're putting not only undigested food, but partially destroyed food. So the amount of food that you need to get the same amount of energy has increased. You are eating much more food than what you should eat to generate that much of energy. Because of that, there is inertia in the body because it has to process so much more food than what it should, there is inertia. Once there is inertia, your sleep quota increases. How many hours do you sleep on? Hello? Eight hours. You're going with a prescription, <laughs> hmm? See, this is not that you must deny yourself sleep, that's not the point. But if you eat right and do a certain things with your body, you see very effortlessly within three to four weeks you can drop your sleep quota anywhere between two to three hours. One and a half to three hours very easily you can drop if you just eat consciously and just learn to sit properly, you know, just the posture, your geometry of the body and what goes into the system. If you just manage these two things, you will see sleep quota will just come down like that. Just to tell you, for over twenty-five years, I have largely managed with an average of two and a half hours of sleep. Now I'm getting lazy and I'm sleeping, averaging somewhere around four and a half hours now. But seven days of the week, okay? 365 days, non-stop, on, 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 ev almost every day. My daughter didn't call me for a month, I asked, what the hell is the problem with you, why are you not calling? She said, every six hours you're in the new city, what the hell I'm supposed to do? <laughs> so I said, okay, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> in one day, sometimes we're doing three cities, so it's a non-stop activity. And today, many people around me have learned to do this. Over hundred, hundred and fifty people around me are doing this kind of activity, averaging four hours sleep and seven days of the week, they're on, 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 all the time. And uh, they are not irritated, they are not frustrated, they're joyful and they're wonderful. Why this is this? There are many aspects to this, but one important aspect is food, how you eat. Not only what you eat, how you eat is also very important because food is a live thing. One simple thing all you girls can do is just see various health issues and inertia issue, focus issue, just bring forty to fifty percent of the food in its raw form, that means it's alive. It must be a live cell, it can be a vegetable, it can be a fruit, it can be a nut, it can be sprouted gram. At least forty to fifty percent, the food that you eat must be alive. You eat dead food and you want to live, this is a little difficult thing to do <laughs> because you have to raise the dead now. <laughs> but if you eat live food, one thing you will see is the state of your mind, your focus and your sleep quotas 
And above all, staying awake is not good enough, you have to stay alert, isn't it? How alert you are, how focused you are, only to that extent everything yields to you in this world, isn't it so? What is the level of focus will determine whether the world yields to you or not, isn't it? And one more aspect of life, one more aspect of food is, when you consume something, it must be of a simple uh, genetic code in the sense, it must be a very simple software. Vegetables, fruits, nuts, sprouts, they're very simple. More complicated means animal food becomes more and more complicated. Suppose you eat an animal which has some amount of emotion and a life of its own. Now the code in that… we were talking about this, your body is just an accumulation of memory, which means a certain software, isn't it? This is the most complex software. Human software is the most complex software on the planet of all the creatures. So if you eat an animal, particularly a mammal, if you eat, it has a similar kind of complexity, maybe not as complex as this, similar level of complexity because it has thought and emotion of its own. Now for you to break that code and integrate it into your system, you are not fully successful. So it will leave traces of certain qualities within you. You cannot break that code and make it a part of yours because it's a different and complex code. If you eat a leaf, a vegetable, a fruit, a nut or a sprout, this is much simpler. If you must eat non-vegetarian food, you must eat that which is furthest away from you. So generally, fish and water life is furthest away from you. So if you must eat non-vegetarian food, the best thing to eat is uh, you have a… you are on the coast. <laughs> fish is the best thing to eat that way. The soul is sacred for people, the body is filthy. How is it possible? Yes, that's what we've been doing, isn't it so? Saying God is sacred, creation is filthy, how is it possible? Your very… the very thought of God occurred to you only because you saw creation, isn't it? When you were born and you opened your eyes, you looked around, so much creation. Before you came here, so much has happened. Obviously, you did not create it. So you thought, there must be a creator. This is how you come to the creator, isn't it? The moment you thought there must be a creator, because you are in a human form, you thought it must be a big man. A small man like me cannot do all this. It must be a big man. Just two hands, how can it do so much creation? must be eight hands, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it so? If you were a buffalo, you would be really thinking, God is a huge buffalo. <laughs> isn't it so? Yes or no? <laughs> you go and ask a buffalo and see, a buffalo will insist, God is a huge buffalo, maybe four horns. <laughs> you know Idi Amin? You heard of Idi Amin? The Uganda man? Idi Amin declared, God is black. I agree with him. If a white man can have a white God, why can't a black man have a black god? But both those people are confused. We know God is brown <laughs> Because he visited us, you know <laughs> Some time ago, I was talking to a group of people in Nashville, in Tennessee. And I was telling them a joke. In the joke, I just referred to God as Him. Immediately a few ladies stood up. Do you believe God is a man? 
I knew where it's going. I said, see, I <laughs> see, I'm only telling you a joke. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You said him. Do you believe God is a man? They take the jokes very seriously. <laughs> Now women are arguing, God could be a woman. Such problems exist only in those cultures in India. We have man God, we have woman God, we have cow God, we have monkey God, we have everything, every kind, crawling one, creeping one, flying one, because we foresaw all the problems of the future. See, when man was the most powerful force on the planet, man was naturally God. Now women are also gaining in their power, so women are questioning, why, why can't it be a woman? So tomorrow suppose dogs gain lot of power which they're gaining, so dogs will ask, why not a dog God? Actually the spelling also is close, you know. He seemed to be closer than you, isn't it? <laughs> so your idea of God is just an, ex an exaggerated version of yourself, isn't it? Your idea of God is just an exaggerated version of yourself. See, you are still not able to define yourself, isn't it? Whatever definition you put on yourself is not correct. Any kind of definition you put on you, it is not enough to describe this one. When this small piece of creation is like this, the source of creation, how are you going to put a definition on it? You cannot define it, you cannot understand it, you can only dissolve into it. You can experience it, you can never know it, you can't make knowledge out of it. Whatever you knowledge, have knowledge you have about God is just pure nonsense, cultural nonsense. Depending upon which kind of culture you are in, that kind of God you have, isn't it? It can only be experienced. Experience does not mean you can eat it or you can grasp it. No, you can experience only by dissolving in it. There is no other way. So, we are just looking for methods of dissolution so that we can experience something far bigger than ourselves. See, uh, when you say love, your experience of love means you feel certain sweetness of emotion within yourself. Either by looking at this person or this person or this person, we don't know who stimulates this in you. It doesn't matter who helped you, but essentially it happened within you, isn't it? Yes? Did it happen only within you or was it in the air? I'm trying to clear this air. <laughs> Combination of both. Really? It was in the air? No, it only happened within you. Maybe what was happening within you was so exuberant, you saw it everywhere. You are in love, you thought the flowers bloomed for you, the birds are singing for you, the clouds are moving for you. Huh? All right, I don't want to destroy all the romance, okay? <laughs> But essentially it's happening within you. It's wonderful that you're experiencing such sweetness of emotion. Stimulated by somebody, you are using the other person as a key to open up an experience within you, essentially. I'm asking you, why are you using a key when there is no lock, when there is no door, when there's no any kind of barrier? It is just that you are a push-start machine. You know what's a push-start machine? If you have owned an ambassador twenty-five years ago, always you parked it on a gradient like this, because morning two people have to push it. <laughs> if you park it like this, nobody will come, your family will not come out of the house. If it's like this, somebody will come and push it. Now all the cars are self-start, many of them remote start. What does it mean? Technological upgradation. You are an institute of technology, all right? I'm asking, would you like to upgrade your technology that you are on self-start? If you wake up in the morning, you are overflowing with joy and love and exuberance by yourself, 
you know, you don't need anybody to stimulate you. Would you like to be a self-start machine? <laughs> then you must come to me, huh? Whoever is right now doing the love in the air, <laughs> it's fine with them, you don't have to tell them anything, you say, all right, it's okay. But <laughs> it's very important you are a self-start machine, otherwise, after some time, you try to extract happiness from the other person. That is when these love affairs become tedious and horrible, because you are trying to extract happiness from the other person. No, life should be like this. When it comes to joy, when it comes to love, when it comes to exuberance of life, you must be the source of this, isn't it? You must be the source of this. Well, other things are shared in life. There are two ways to enter into a relationship. One way is because you want to extract something from somebody. Another way is because you want to share something with somebody. These are two ways. If you're out to share, your life will be good. If you're out to extract, when they close the tap, it's going to get terrible and nasty. You have seen people who thought they're absolute lovers, how terrible it becomes for many of them. Not because there's anything wrong with them, simply because you started off on the wrong footing, thinking, this person is the source of my joy. No, no, no. Joy or misery, the source is within you. Yes or no? Whether it's joy or misery, the source is within you. It's for you to decide. If you're a joyful human being, they will also want to be with you. If you're a misery, they will endure you for some time. Shall I tell you a joke? Are you okay? Peace, <laughs> Sadhguru. On a certain day, Shankar and Pillai, <laughs> what happened? Was walking in a park in the evening, sunset time. He saw a young, pretty-looking woman sitting on a stone bench. You know the park benches? He also went on, sat down, settled down on the same bench. After some time, he moved little close. She moved little away. He allowed a few minutes and again moved little closer. She moved little away. Again he moved closer. Now there was nowhere else to go for her because she was at the end of the bench. She pushed him away. Then he waited for two minutes, just the sun to get to the right angle. Then he went down on his knees and he said, I love you. I love you like I have never loved anybody in my life. You know a woman is a fool for love. And the sun was setting. If it was middle of the afternoon, she wouldn't believe a damn thing <laughs> Sun was setting, the ambience was right and she kind of yielded. Nature took over, things happened between them. Then he looked at his watch, it was eight o'clock in the evening. He got up and he said, I need to go, I need to go. She said, where are you going? You said you love me. He said, my wife is waiting, I need to go <laughs> So, I love you for a whole lot of people is like that, you know, open sesame, you want to get something, maybe your needs are physical, psychological, emotional, financial, social or we don't know what else. You have needs to fulfill. So you use this mantra and it works, half the time it works, okay? I'm saying it's important, it is important you know the joy of being loving because sweetness of emotion is needed for you if you want to take really big steps in your life. If you do not have sweetness of love in your heart, believe me, if you try to take big steps in the world, particularly in India, you will end up frustrated and go to Canada <laughs> In Canada you meet only moose in most of the countries, so it's okay. Thank you for joining us. Please share your observations on this subject in the comments, subscribe to continue our journey together and invite others to join this path. See you soon.